I tell you guys all the time that this is a, a merciless game, right? And, and in the context of us, a horse passes away or a horse breaks a bone or a horse gets injured, these are the, the things we talk about, right, in our context. But we forget horses have personalities too. And it's merciless for them sometimes too, you know. Um, Eldis Patrick was never a smooth-gated horse. Last year, bumping and chopping along, but he was tough and he'd go. And I, I fell in love with the horse, to be honest. You know, I love horses that are like that. You know, it was funny because uh, Steve had, had asked me, sometimes when a horse is, is gone through such a long, rough patch and then comes to life and is good for so long and then you turn them out, do you think they could come back and just be like, nah, I don't, nah, I I, I'm good. Listen, I, I want to say no, but, well, first off, there's proof it can happen. And secondly, um, horses are a lot like humans. They're very personable creatures. And when they get down on themselves, when they get in a funk, it's hard to snap them out. I can tell you it doesn't have to ha help is putting them on the front. Like that, it doesn't help. And I'm not blaming myself. You guys will see me come on here all the time and say, oh, I drove this horse bad or I drove that horse bad. And I am. I drive. Somebody said to me, oh, you should never admit when you drive a horse bad. It, it looks bad. No, it doesn't. At the end of the day, I, I like to absolve myself also and tell the truth. But when it comes to LD's Patrick, the LD's Patrick I schooled three weeks ago was in the winner's circle after the race and I know it's cold and I know the front end's not holding up those are bad horses and he was the worst of the bunch tonight and that's not me making fun of him I'm not going to make fun of this horse you know I had a lot of fun with this horse and you know when he comes off the track he's not pinning his ears and being rude he's got his ears up he's just in a funk and I feel bad for him I do but there's nothing I can do for him in Ontario if this was a typical horse and there's going to be lots of my partners say, treat him like a typical horse. If this was a typical horse, he'd simply be on on gate by 8.53. We were lucky I could have him up there by 9.30. But he's not a typical horse. It's cold tonight. You know, we knew going in, I had a couple of messages from people saying, how oh, the horse is going to bleed tonight. They could. They could bleed any night in the heat, cold, you know, a damp night, a windy night. Does the cold help? Absolutely not, it doesn't. Did LD's Patrick bleed? Probably a bit. But I didn't feel, when you sit behind a bleeder, you can feel them kind of go, 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 and then fizzle out a bit and then walk. That looks like what he did, but around the last turn, he just didn't have any march to him. When I put him in gear, there, I called on him because I knew, I said, I knew the horse sitting behind me didn't trot the greatest in the turns. And I know... You know, I could see in the TV, Kevin Anthony wasn't super super close at the 8th pole. So there's probably a good chance I can get the jump on them. If he does do the moonwalk a bit, if he does bleed a bit, 30 in a piece should do it. That was right, 30 seconds won the race. 30 seconds flat was the last quarter. His certainly was not. So I think LD's Patrick's in a funk. And uh, I want to believe he's trying to find his way out, but man, I've, ne I've never, as, circling back to what I'd said, you know, talking to you about how, how he was choppy and rough gated, but putting in great performances. It took us every bit of a year to get him squared. The way he is shot right now, he is perfect. He has never trotted a better, a better mile ever, a more consistently fluid mile in his life than he has been his last few starts, aside from the break on James. Never one time, not once. And yet, he's terrible. That will keep me up tonight. But ultimately, you know, I tell everybody, we go through the trouble. This is the speech I give all of you. All my partners on bad horses that aren't racing good and probably need to go. Those are the horses that hold the burn back. You know, every time, if you guys go back and look, I don't know why it is. Maybe it's just in my head, but it seems like when we discard some horses that just aren't stable horses, when we cut them from the team, the team just looks that much better. You know, I'm going away on Monday. It's abundantly clear that uh, 
a number of things could happen with LV's Patrick. I'm going to have people lobby to sell him, and quite frankly, he's worth nothing right now. He might be worth eight or ten thousand dollars, maybe. Here's Orson's race ten times in a row, and has one win and nine no checks. Look it up. That's hard to do, especially in this burn. You don't usually last those nine starts. I think maybe when I come back, I know for sure Cindy's going to message me in a minute and say he bled two and a half out of five. I know he bled. There's no two ways about it, but he shouldn't have stopped like that. So I think what we'll do is, is turn him out, send him over to Tim. Now, this is fair warning to my partners on the horse. I, and, and quite frankly, I, I hold a, a majority position in LD's Patrick. As you guys have been dumping your shares, I've been picking them up sheer, out of sheer love for the horse. I think I'm going to turn him out and take him over to the Meadows and race him in a 10 claimer, or 12 claimer, see if we can get him to come back to life. Because um, he's not that far from life. Three weeks ago, I did school him in 55. My watch wasn't wrong. I know what I went with him. But that's not the horse that raced today. And I, I'm not going to make excuses and say he bled, or it was a cold, or it was the track, or it was the this. He tried it perfect. He just had nothing to offer. So that's the plan with LD's Patrick. Uh, simply for two reasons. One, I'm going to race him in where he absolutely should win, although he should have won tonight. And two, um, he's not worth a whole lot of money to sell him right now. And that's, that's a God's honest truth. So that's where we're at with Patrick. I know um, I had talked to James before he left. Him. I already knew this going into the race. The front end wasn't holding up, but, you know, the way he get out of the gate, the way he felt going to the quarter pole, I said, man, probably be pretty good. And I knew he might get a little soft. It is cold tonight. It is windy, but I, I didn't see that coming. So I think um, finding a class where he should, can, and will do is important. And hopefully we can do that. So um, you'll likely see him show up at the Meadows in a 10 climber or something his next start. Um, man. Is, is, I don't, and again, I don't feel bad that the way I drove him. I don't feel bad about it. I feel bad for the horse. That he that he's just no good right now. A horse that was so good for us last year and, and raced his heart out. Maybe he literally raced his heart out. I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, seven minutes and 30 seconds to talk about a horse that was last. But a horse that, that I still do like. So... Uh, the reason we're not dumping him is because he's not worth anything right now. And the reason we're going to pay the money to ship him to the Meadows is because there's not uh, even a 15 claimer here right now. There's no claimers. But I believe there's a 10 to 12 that fills pretty regularly at the Meadows. Now, I will double-check that to make sure it does. And if it, if that, in fact, is the truth, he'll likely be heading to Tim Twaddle's stable uh, sometime in the next week or so. We won't race him next week, assuming that he, he bled, because I assume he did. If that is the case, which I assume it is, then we'll give him a week off, ship him to the Meadows, and uh, race him under uh, under Tim's barn. Now, when I come back from my from my week off, um, I'm going to be in Ohio for a week because Jason is going away for a week. Jason McGinnis is going away with his girlfriend, so I am going to fill in, and I'm going to be in the U.S. for seven days. In that seven days, we'll race some horses at the Meadows in Northfield Park, and I'd like to get a nice, like I said. 8, 10, 12 claimer for uh, L.D. Patrick. So, disappointed. Disappointed. Not in the horse. Not disappointed in the horse at all. Just disappointed in the whole, the whole situation. Um, and hopefully it can bounce back next week. Two weeks from now. So, I'll let you guys go. Sorry about wasting nine minutes and five seconds of your night. But, um, I think it's important, as I said, to, to remember that these are, as I say all the time, living, breathing animals. And, and sometimes they get down in the dumps too. So hopefully we can help Patrick out and get him in a spot he can do some good and uh, and move forward with him in some sort of format moving forward. So with that, I'll let you go. Good luck to everybody with Macho Martini later on. James and I discussed how he is, how he isn't. Uh, he knows that the front end's not holding up and, you know, that he also is prone to, to bleed once in a while. So uh, I don't think Patrick gushed or anything. He wasn't blowing. He didn't seem uncomfortable after the race. He just, just looked like he was down in the dumps. So, see if we can help him this next start. I'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, it is a bitter cold night here. Not as bad as I thought. Without the, the wind is up, but not, not howling. 
and it is cold. You can feel the wind bite you, but it's not a. I, I don't. I don't think Woodbine had just canceled tonight, put it that way, and I'd be the first to tell you I can't speak for Yonkers and the Meadowlands and London, but Mohawk, Woodbine Mohawk Park, I got no problem with them racing tonight. Take care, everybody.